Well, live from Jackie Robinson Ballpark in beautiful downtown Daytona Beach, Florida. It's time for the third and final game of conference series number two of the SWAC season for the Wildcats as they look to complete a three game sweep over the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Trevillo. Happy to have your company. Happy to have the company today of Daryl Nateel. Daryl, last night a little bit of drama, but the Wildcats got the job done late, and today they go for the sweep. You know, we saw Mississippi Valley play the better game of the series so far. They had their number one ace on the mound, and he kind of stifled the Wildcats' bats for the first five innings, but we kept chipping away at it. And we put up a five spot in the bottom half of the sixth inning, and the Cats came back and won a close ball game. We saw great pitching. Tall left-hander, rangy kid, about 6'6", one of the better pitchers in this white conference. So the Cats come out this afternoon, four-game winning streak, trying to take the third game of the series and head into the midweek against uh, University of South Florida, then the Florida and them Rattlers next weekend. So this afternoon, got to take care of business. Yeah, last night it was Hunter Stallings who had a 403 ERA and pitched very well before he was chased for the game and the bullpen for the second game in a row really letting the Delta Devils down. Delta Devils hit the ball well. They had 10 hits on the, on the afternoon, but the bullpen, the Cats got into the bullpen and loaded the bases and the play of the game was a pop to center field. In the twilight, the center fielder couldn't find the pop up and all the runs scored. That was Luis Tuero with the three run double to give the Wildcats the lead, a lead they would not relinquish even though they gave up another run in the ninth inning. Luis Lipthrat takes the mound for Bethune Cookman today after being bumped from his normal Friday spot after last week. He'll take the mound on Sunday today. Lipthrat is two and one with a 740 ERA and five starts. He's got 24 and a third innings pitch. He's given up 22 runs on 28 hits with 25 strikeouts and only eight walks. And Lipthrat is a guy who is really trying to find some confidence after being shaken up a bit earlier in the season. You know, a couple of, lot of young guys have pitched against the big boys, the Florida States and the South Carolinas, and they've been kind of beat up, you know, on the on the mound. So giving these guys a chance to get some confidence here in swipe play is very huge. Lip Threat's a tall kid, good range, nice fastball, good popping fastball, has a good breaking ball too, and his all-speed pitch will be the pitch this afternoon that keeps them offset. Mississippi Valley sends Maury Weaver to the plates. Weaver, a 321 hitter, takes a fastball outside for strike one. Weaver, in 78 at bats, he's got 21 runs on 25 hits, one homer and 12 RBIs, and also has stolen 12 bases. That's third best on the team behind Devon Mims is 25 and Narvin Booker is 22. Those are the top two in the country, respectively. Here's a 1-1 outside 2-1. Lip Threat stands all the way to the right on the mound. This one is hammered out to left center field, and it's going to bounce down in front of Guzman, and a base hit for Weaver to open the game. Defensively, the Wildcats look like this. Garrett Chun in left. Um, Jeremiah Guzman replaces Malik Stevens in center. Highland Hall's in right. Perez, Garcia, Tuero, and Pena, exact same infield left to right. Irvin Escobar behind the plate, replacing the injured George Brissaris and Lewis Lipthrat on the mound. Here's Devon Hull, or Davion Hull, excuse me, the lefty. Spin and a throw back to first. Weaver dives in safely. Another spin and a throw back to first. And in the MLB, He'd be done throwing over to first for the batter, but <laughs> you'd have a big lead on the next pitch. And not not here in college. Still hasn't come home to hole yet. This one bunted down the third baseline, scooping his Perez, throwing to first in time, but the sacrifice bunt gets Weaver over to second. And there's one away, and here's Draylon Holmes. You know, this team's station to station, using their speed on the base path. They bunted the ball three times last night, so when you're struggling like they are, station to station is your ball game. 
Here's Draylen Holmes. He's the power bat in this Mississippi Valley lineup. A 271 hitter. 19 runs on as many hits. Six homers that leads the team in 17 RBIs. And he's got a man on second with one out. Liftrat checks the runner and deals, and it bounces away from Escobar, and that'll be a wild pitch that gets Weaver 90 feet away from scoring the opening run. This game's starting like it did yesterday. Valley came out and threatened early in the ball game, getting some base runners on. Right now, you got a runner on third, and one man down. And Escobar walks out to talk to his pitcher, Irvin was first team all swack at the catcher position in preseason poll, but has been stuck behind the red hot George Braceris until Friday when he took a foul tip off of his glove hand. It is not broken, uh, thankfully, as we initially feared. It is a contusion, so Braceris out for an unknown amount of time. One down, runner on third, the count one and zero. Oh. Lip that breaking ball, swing and a miss. So this kid hit a homer last night over the Dustin barbecue sign. Long home run. And then Boris Pena probably hit the home run of the series. The shot to straightaway center into the wind on Friday night. 410 feet. Counts two balls and a strike to Holmes. And there's a strike, and it's two and two. Lip threat, not as big of a strikeout guy as Nolan Santos is, and he's still got a very good strikeout to walk ratio at being 25 to eight on the year. And he deals and bounces it to the plate. Weaver remains on third, and the count runs full. And that's two potential wild pitches in the game. Escobar is getting, getting an early workout. Holmes swinging the bright yellow bat with the red gloves. Here's the pitch. Grounder up the middle. Fielded by Garcia. He fires in time to first, but Weaver scores. And it's one to nothing Mississippi Valley State. And for the second game in a row, the Delta Devils have an early lead. Give Holmes the RBI, ground ball up the middle, scored the run from third, so the Devils up early, one to nothing. Here's the first baseman, Victor Figueroa. And the first pitch from Lip Threat is in there for a strike inside corner, 0-1. Figueroa is the best batting average on the team at 348. He's got 24 hits, 13 runs, one homer, and 15 RBIs. Base is empty, two down. And that pitch outside. Threat, deals, hit high in the air, and foul, that'll go over the seats. These guys have a great weekend in the world's most famous beach. They're enjoying the weather, they're enjoying the beach. They had a number of fans here uh, over the weekend. Not that many this afternoon, but they brought at least 80 people with them. Well, a lot of these Mississippi Valley players are from the state of Florida. This one grounded through the left side, base hit. So the second base hit of the inning for MVSU keeps the Devils the Devils at the plate here in the first and brings up the catcher, Ryan Brown. You know, a, a lot of players on this Valley team from Florida, so their families made the drive over here, I'm sure, when they go to Florida A&M. Well, they already have been to Florida A&M this season. That was their first road series. Um, so you got a couple of kids from Fort Pierce, catchers from Fort Pierce. That's two hours away. Sure, the Delta Devils are well supported anywhere they go in the Sunshine State. This one hit high in the air to left center. Tough play for Highland Hall. It's going to bounce over the wall for a ground rule double. Figueroa rounds third and crosses the plate, but he'll have to go back to third. So you just need a ground ball out right here to get out of the inning. Yeah, but... Two runners so in scoring position. For the second straight game, a rough start for the Wildcats. 
Well, we've been playing from behind most of the season. That's that's the way we we've been programmed to, to come from behind early. Yeah, cardiac cats all season long. You don't obviously don't want to be in no. these positions, but the Wildcats no stranger to it. This is Chris Soder, the designated hitter. Fouls went off at the plate. The Joe Bun Jumbotron is not on tonight. It wasn't on yesterday. It wasn't on the last two nights either. It, it was on earlier this afternoon, but they turned it off. Oh, we're, I was talking to the guy running it earlier, and he says it's giving him an error message when he tries to input any balls or strikes or anything. So, yeah. Chopper to third. That's going to be a tough play for Perez. He has no – oh, no, they called it foul. Ball. And maybe – that's in the Wildcats' best interest because yeah. Perez would have been had a tough play. Yeah, and he would have scored. Runner would have scored. He'd have been tough at first. Last night, Valley jumped on the board first in the fourth inning as both pitchers were strong through three with two runs in the fourth. They increased the lead of three to nothing and four to nothing in the sixth and seventh before the Wildcats put a five spot up in the bottom of the seventh to eventually win the game. Final score was six to four. Second and third, two out. 0-2 pitch. Lipthat looking for a call on the outside corner. Won't get it. And it's 1-2. And Soder, a 250 hitter. Seven runs on as many hits. Two homers, nine RBIs. Looking to increase that number here as Lipthat tries to work out of a jam. And he fouls it off. The count holds 1-2. and two. Beautiful afternoon for baseball, man. You got a couple of clouds up in the sky, about 83 degrees. The wind blowing from left to right to me. That's different. Going to right field. Yeah, we. I mentioned that before the game. Usually the wind either blows in off the water or out to left, but it's blowing out to right today. This one hit hard down the left field line. Foul, and the count holds again. This will be the sixth pitch. Of the at bat for Soder. He had a like, nine pitch at bat yesterday before he walked. Lip bat the junior from Dublin, Ohio, stands in. And from the stretch deals. Upstairs, two and two. He's just trying to either get Soder to chase on the outside corner or get a called strike three. But he hasn't gotten either yet. Now the two and two. Chop foul, count holds again, and a third ball sent into foul territory by Soder at this at bat. You change the eye level again right now. You might want to throw something low and outside to see if you chase it. Soder, Florida kid from Sarasota. The two two. Punched foul again. That was the outside pitch. He just reached for it, fouled it off. You got to come with all speed now. Already one in the inning. Valley threatening more with second and third. The 2-2-2 two, two, two out pitch. Hammered foul again. This one is going to make the river. That ball probably went. 300 feet in the wrong direction. Soda caught all of that one. One thing for sure is the newest leather that's out there. There's a lot of leather out there. And he fouls it off once again. And if anything, this is just putting more pressure on Lip Threat to get out of this inning and not use too many pitches. Got him. Got him on the outside corner looking strike three. That's the breaking ball was looking for the outside corner for the third out. Well. The Delta Devils strike first. One run on three hits, two left. And we go to the bottom of the first. Delta Devils won the Wildcats coming to bat right here on the Cat Eye Network.
Calvin McClendon, the junior from Lena, Mississippi, takes the mound for Mississippi Valley State as Luis Tuero stands in to begin the Wildcats' bottom of the first. They trail the Delta Devils one to nothing. Ball on the inside corner, one and zero. Here are the statistics for McClendon. He's two and two with an 8.06 ERA. He's got three starts. This is fourth and six appearances, and the pitch comes inside and hits Luis, and he'll take his base. And that'll bring up Garrett Chun. Chun, excuse me. McClendon, 22 and a third innings pitch, has given up 27 runs on 22 hits with 22 strikeouts and 17 walks. 22 is the number. It is indeed. And now here's Garrett Chun with one on and nobody out. He lays off the first pitch and it finds the outside corner on one. Chun batting 309, 20 runs on 25 hits, no homers and four RBIs. They check the runner at first. Tuero gets back. Here's the defensive setup for Mississippi Valley. Mims, Booker, and Hall in the outfield left to right. Holmes, Yafariel, Ortiz, Weaver, and Figueroa on the infield left to right. Brown behind the plate, McClendon on the mound. And McClendon deals low, and the count one and one. I think McClendon's more comfortable from the stretch than he is from the windup. His windup is kind of wild, but. A lot of lefties are. Mm -hmm. The line foul down the first baseline. That missed the bag by about a foot. At least we saw that one. There's been some balls hit down the third baseline. We're still guessing about. <laughs> I think my favorite moment from Friday's broadcast was when Bryce and I were talking about the weird interaction that happened on Tuesday where the ball hit fair and then, land and then landed fair, hit the clubhouse wall and bounced back into play and was called a ground rule double. They checked to arrow again. The exact same thing happened as we were talking about <laughs> it on Friday and they called it a fair ball. They didn't call it a ground rule double. Same umpire and crew though, right? Uh, no, no, it was, it was a different not. crew. Breaking ball, chop foul, and it's two and two. I think John has to talk about that one in the pregame meeting with the uh, ground rules mm -hmm. for the game. He has to talk about that one. Yeah. Because we're going to see that again, especially with this turf. Defensively in the outfield, they're shading to right. This one chopped towards short. This could be two. On to second for one. Back to first, double play. The 6-4-3 variety. Yep. Chun grounds into it, and now there's two down for Highland Hall. Hall with the best batting average on the team at 368. I got an interesting story about him after this pitch. 28 hit, uh, 18 runs on 28 hits, one homer, 13 RBI, takes the pitch upstairs. I talked to him before the game, you know, we just recently got a running back from, from Washington State, and these guys were roommates, he didn't even know it, he was his roommate, snuck up and signed with the Wildcats. <laughs> the, uh... Jojo Basil, running back. I believe, is it Cheney, Washington, where the, where Washington State is? Pullman. Pullman? No, Cheney is Eastern Washington. From pull, the Pullman to Daytona Beach connection. Yep, and that's exactly what he said. Inside corner strike, count one and one. McClendon trying to turn a quick inning here. Ball swings and misses, and it's one and two. Wildcats in the Maroon tops, pinstriped white bottoms as Hall hits one in the air to center, not deep. Rushing on is Booker. He loses his hat, but he makes the catch. And one, two, three, go the Cats. No runs, no hits, none left. And we head to the top of the second. one nothing Delta Devils right here on the Cat Eye Network. <laughs>
Luis Lipthrat out for his second inning of work. After the Delta Devils sent six to the plate, scoring one in the top of the first. Lipthrat in his second year with the Wildcats. Is six and four with a 390 ERA and 14 starts a season ago. And leading off for the Delta Devils is Yodani Oferil Ortiz, who started the double play in the middle of the last inning. Good looking kid out of Kissimmee, Florida. Went to the baseball academy over there. That one off the glove of Escobar and skips away. Count one and one. Before Bethune Cookman Lip Threat was at Clark State College. And this one's chopped to third. Fielded by Perez. He throws across the diamond in time. And that's his second put out of the game. And it is one out. And now here's Narvin Booker. Booker, second highest steals on the team, 22. 22 out of 28 this season. So he's a guy you don't really want getting on base. Yeah, I was kidding with him doing a uh, bed practice yesterday. He took his shirt off and I was calling him Mookie Betts. <laughs> Bet left-handed, just like Mookie, with the same glasses and everything. The 1-0. Inside corner strike, one and one. Booker, a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, takes a big cut and miss at a ball that broke away from him. And it's one and two. Lip threat, deals, hit hard to third, and that's caught in the air by Perez. Great stop that time, the ball on a, on a short hop off the turf. Positioned himself beautifully and threw him out at first base. Well, no, it wasn't even a, it wasn't a throw out. He caught that on a line. Oh, it was a line drive? It was a line drive. Okay. The third base third. umpire immediately okay. signaled okay. out when so he caught the ball. So he didn't have to throw it first. Yeah. So yeah, here's the nine hole hitter, Devon Mims. Mims, a 278 hitter, 11 runs on 22 hits, no homers, seven RBIs. Takes a strike in the count 0 and 1. And how would Luis slip to that level 1 2 3 inning here? After the mess in the first, ball upstairs, 1 and 1. This is the kid that got called out by the umpire. In, uh, in, in New Orleans, I talked to him before the game. He was like, "What are you talking oh, about?" Oh, the, the said, clip, the clip yeah. that went viral. Yeah. Yeah. I said, "Kid, you're viral. You're famous, man." He said, "Not <laughs> me. No, come on, man. You're a very humble kid." You know, we, we laughed about it. And I said, "I told him I liked how you handled the whole situation." He said, "Yeah, that ball was low, man." I said, "Yeah, you're right." Mims, originally from Vicksburg, Mississippi, he's got a one-two count on him. He drills this one to center field. Going out from his shortstop position is Garcia to make the catch. And that'll be a quick one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no left. And we go to the bottom of the second. Wildcats still down by one.
Boris Pena leads off the second for Bethune Cookman. He's had the hot bat of late. Mr. BP himself. Leads the Wildcats with three home runs on the year. Other than that, he's got a 292 batting average. Scored 16 runs on 21 hits, three homers, and 18 RBIs to lead the team. No call outside, and the count one and one. I think he called ever. Yeah, it's one and one. Pena check swing, rung him up anyway, one and two. They're on the Jackie Robinson manual scoreboard this afternoon. Yeah, the digital scoreboard not working today. Still pretty new, the, the digital scoreboard. This is only its second season. Or the third. Third season? Third season, yeah, this is third season. But, you know, you hurricane it. Been through a couple of hurricanes, too, so. Perez fouls this one off. Count holds one and two. Excuse me, Pena. Pena, a senior from High Lip, spent his entire college career with the Wildcats. Swing and a miss, and down he goes. First strikeout for McLennan. And this will bring up Robert Moya. You gotta like this guy. I was talking with Dan Ryan yesterday, and that, looking at his batting helmet with all the pine tar on it. He's a hard, hard out. Hits the ball well, and he brings his lunch pail every time. Boy, a 319 hitter. 15 runs on 23 hits, one homer, 13 RBIs, and hits this one foul. The Wildcats, as they are wont to do this season, being aggressive very early in counts, swinging at first and second pitches. This one, a check swing foul, count 0 and 2. Moya, Jr., also from Hialeah. Not surprising, given that's Johnny Hernandez's hometown down the there. The thoroughbreds, the T-breds, how you live. The 0-2 from McClendon. Fouled away. Both of the games, this series have been done and dusted pretty quick, just over two hours, both Friday and Saturday, and this one is hit high in the air to left. There is no doubt about it. Adios, amigos, as that one bangs off the roof of the batting cages. Mr. Moya still swinging at heavy lumber. Just drill that thing over the velocity sign. A little velocity on that. There was no doubt about it when the second it left his bat, Mims only took about three steps backwards and then decided it wasn't worth chasing after as that might be the longest home run we've seen hit out of this park this season. And that was into the wind. Yeah, the wind's blowing the right field. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the if regular, the wind, Yeah, <laughs> that ball would have landed probably somewhere near the bridge. If the wind was blowing out the left. Anyway, <laughs> we got a 1-1 ball game, and here's Irvin Escobar. Escobar, first team all swack. Catcher in the preseason. And he swings and lifts this one down the left field line, and that'll land to the Budweiser bullpen. Bunt has sat behind George Brasaris for the most part because Brasaris is swinging a hot bat, unfortunately, before this injury on Friday. And now Escobar going to be the everyday starter behind the plate. And funnily enough, Boris Pena is his backup. You know, that's a great problem to have. You know, got guys who can hit the ball and play defensively. So that'll pay off later on in the season to give him some rest. Ground ball shortstop. Ortiz lazily throws across the diamond and there's two away. Bryce and I were joking before the game that uh, we may see Boris Pena play every position <laughs> before the year is out. He's played left first. He's set up to play catcher at some point this season. I don't see him anywhere on the schedule where that'll allow that because <laughs> he's getting ready to get rough for us. First pitch, a strike looking. Here's Jeremy Garcia. JC, JG. Garcia, 303 hitter. Watches that one inside corner strike two. 
14 runs on 20 hits, one homer and 12 RBIs. Garcia watches this one pop out of Brown's glove. On Friday, Brown had a pretty tough time of it. A couple of pass balls allowed VCU runs to score. And this one laced to the right side and threw for a base hit. So a two out single for Garcia keeps the inning alive. So I guess they're blaming, you know, they played Nickel State on Wednesday, then a long bus ride to Florida on Thursday. And then you got a game on Friday, you give up 13 runs. So they came back a little rested yesterday. Well, this is the swag. You're going to get those kind of road trips. Especially when you got to go to Etta Better. <laughs> Way out there in the woods and nowhere. Here's Brian Perez. First pitch to him from McClendon hit foul. And it's 0 and 1. Perez only playing in his sixth game of the year. And only 21 at bats. Three runs on two hits, three RBI though. His first hit of the season was against Stetson. That's right. On yeah, Tuesday right. and had a two RBI double. Inside one one. I think Jeremy Guzman is taking uh, Malik Stevens' spot here in center field. He is giving indeed. Malik a rest. As Coach Hernandez changes up the lineup just a little bit today. Breaking ball over the middle. That's a tough one to lay off of. When, you know, you're, you're McClendon, your breaking ball sitting somewhere probably in the mid to high 70s. Fastball running up probably 85, 87. Fouled away. Two strikes on Perez. Brian trying to keep the inning going. One in already on the home run by Robert Moya. Garcia stands at first after his two out single. And he swings and misses at one in the opposite batter's box. And that ends the inning. One run, two hits, one left. And we go to the third inning in a tie ball game. 1-1 one, one here at the Jack. Top of the order for the Delta Devils to start the third. Maury Weaver singled in the first and scored the only run of the game on a wild pitch and two sacrifices from Hall and Holmes. Weaver, the right-hander against Lipvat. He settled down in the second inning, got a 1-2-3, and there's a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Weaver, originally from Fayetteville, Georgia, and a transfer from Rust College at the Division II level. You know, the former coach was the head coach at Rust. Maybe he came with the former 
a baseball coach. This guy they have now, they, he was just been there a year. Yep, brand new this Seth. season, Milton Barney. Mm -hmm. And if that name sounds familiar Lim to you, Barney. he is the grandson of Lem Barney, NFL Hall of Famer. Of course, Mississippi Valley State, well known for their football program in years gone by. Somebody by the name of Jerry Rice. Rice and Deacon Jones, also in the, the Deacon himself. NFL Hall of Fame, played at Mississippi Valley State. And Milton's dad, Milton Barney Sr., played football at Alcorn. Liner to the right side. It's a base hit just over the outstretched glove of Tuero. And Weaver has two base hits in two plate appearances. Here's a trivia question for you. Who played in the first football game ever at Daytona International Speedway? International mm -hmm. Speedway? Mm -hmm. Milton Cookman and Mississippi Valley. Wow. Yep. I see. I didn't know that. I didn't. I know they played you know, soccer over there and other uh, motocross. Back other in stuff the in 70s, the we played them out there in the sticker burrows right there in front of the first turn we should bring that back yeah. that would be cool you can play out there they're thinking about playing homecoming out there there's been some talk because of the parking and the traffic of you can play soccer there you can play football there. well yeah i mean they played a, a orlando pride women's game there last year they played some international friendlies over the summer last year i think they're gonna do it again this year that's because that, that infield grass is long enough One on, nobody out. The batter is Davion Hall. It's a pitch out. Morey goes to second. The throw is in time. He's out. Got him. Beautiful, beautiful throw by Escobar. He gunned him down twice last night. And nice play by the Wildcats. It was a pitch out, intentional fastball on the outside to give Escobar the best chance of throwing out Weaver, and there's one away. Count is 0-1 on Hull, and he fouls it off. Correction, the count is now 0-1. That was the first pitch to Weaver. Oh, none of these stats are right because that first pitch was a ball outside. He get the pitch out. This one's fouled away. The only thing I know for sure right now is there are two strikes. After Weaver was caught stealing, nobody on, one out. Hit off the inside of the bat near the hands and popped up to Garcia at short, and they're two away. There was one point in Friday night's game where Davion Hall out in right field had six straight putouts across two innings. Really? They just kept hitting fly balls to right. <laughs> well, the wind was wasn't blowing that way. I know. Yeah. By the night, the wind was blowing to the. It was the opposite. Yeah. Everybody just kept hitting it, hitting it to the opposite way. And in the middle of that, there were eight straight putouts to right because um, Highland Hall caught two as well. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. Now two down, here's Draylon Holmes. He fouls that one away, the count one and one. Holmes has the RBI for Mississippi Valley State, grounded out to the shortstop in the first inning that plated Murray Weaver. There's a strike. He's one of the better players in the swag. He's, he's probably gonna be second or third team swag. He's a great stick, his approach is very, very, Decisive. He's got the best power on this Valley team with his six home runs. Fouls that one away to stay alive, one and two. When you come to the ballpark and you see every guy with a with, with a with a oven mitt, mitt in the back pocket, you know they're stealing bases.
One, two, fouled away, and we'll do it again. One of Mississippi Valley's warm-ups is about steals. They all line up down the right field line, and one of their coaches stands in the outfield and, you know, mimes throwing a pitch, and they all take off at the same time. And the first time I'd ever seen that. The one-two. If you ever go watch BCU softball, we get a runner on base on a three-point stance. You ever seen that? From yes. Runner? Yeah, yeah. Softball up four to one against Jackson State, trying to take that series. If they do, the softball cats will have won two out of three in all three of their SWAC series so far. They had the lead going into the um, top of the with the fifth yesterday and gave up a couple of runs and they lost it in the top of the seven, bottom of the seven. Count is full to Holmes. Ah, he swings and misses at a breaking ball, strike three. No runs, one hit, none left. And we go to the bottom of the third, the Wildcats and the Delta Devils tied at one. Jeremiah Guzman, the nine-hole hitter, leads off for the Wildcats in the third. Guzman playing in replace of Malik Stevens, who has played in center field the last four games. Guzman, a 250 hitter, only 24 at bats, five runs, six hits, one homer, six RBIs. McClendon still out there for Valley as Guzman squares to bunt. The pitch goes wide. I'm not sure why McClendon charged in like that. The, the throwback from Brown almost went by yeah, him. Because he, he squared the bunt, and he, his momentum just carried him all, all the way down. The 1-0 got away from McClendon 2-0. Now this time the ball gets away from him. Weaver has to go over there and recover it. They're shading Guzman to left field is the defense, and he pops this one foul straight back. We've seen a lot of hard hit balls from both sides just kind of get down in front of the outfielders. Not a lot of high fly balls today with the grand exception of the uh, Moya homer. While on Friday, there were a ton of flyouts. 3-1. Down the middle, 3-2. and two. And the take sign must have been on there from yeah, that, Jose Carballo at third. Yeah, he could have ripped that in the right field easily. 3-2. This one is hit to right field. Moving over is Hall in foul territory. And it makes the bullpen seats. You ever been here on a Thursday night? For Thursday, Thursday, Thursday down in that Budweiser Thursday. bullpen? Goodness gracious, God. At the Daytona Tortugas thing, they'll start to come around here in the next few weeks, getting their season underway, which is the reason the Wildcats have played this 15-game homestand. But it's favorable for us to play here later on in the year because we'll play uh, Jackson State and a couple more games here. The Tortugas will be on the road. 
18 games straight on the road coming up for Bethune-Cookman after next weekend against Florida A&M. Nice at bat by Guzman drawing the first walk of the game. And now we're back to the top of the order with Luis Tuero was hit by a pitch and then was caught in the 6-4-3 double play in the first. Here's what's good because minor league baseball, they, they play four games on a row. They play, no, they play six games, five games on a the row, then have a day off, then they travel it in. Yeah. I know that's that's a cost-saving measure. I am not the biggest fan of those like six-game series. First pitch stealing from Guzman, and he is safe. And this is what the Wildcats love to do. They love to get runners on with one or no outs, steal, play small ball. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Torero maybe lay one down down the first baseline here. Just try and move the runner to third. And that also takes the threat of the double play away. But and this one is ripped to I short, know. and what did I say? <laughs> it takes the threat of a double play away, and Tuero rips it right to Yafariel Ortiz, who steps on second for the unassisted double play. He was played, playing behind the runner at second base. He was positioned perfectly for that line draft. And now, here's Garrett Chun, who hit into the double play in the first, with two down, nobody on. And Chun for his switch swinging, grounds it foul right-hand side. So after today, only one day off for the Cats, and then they have the Bulls of South Florida in here on Tuesday. Pitch way outside one and one. You can catch that game right here on the Cat Eye Network. And then a big one. Three games against the Florida A&M Rattlers right here at the Jack, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of next week. This one lined to left field, and that will get down for a base hit. That run would have scored. Big turn at first. Almost thought that Chun was thinking about second, but he will hold up. And now for the second straight inning, there's a runner aboard with two outs. Here's Highland Hall. Hall flew out to center to end the first inning. So March 31st and then April 1st and 2nd against Florida a and and then starts that 18-game road swing for the Wildcats. Upstairs to Hall. Hall, as I mentioned, leading this team in batting average with 368. And as part of a mess of players with mid to low teens and RBIs. Hall rips this one to center field. Booker tracking and he makes the catch. So two straight fly outs to center on hard hit balls for Hall to end innings. No runs, one hit, one left for the second straight time. And we go to the fourth, it's still a 1-1 ball game. Top of the fourth we go. Delta Devils and Wildcats tied at one. Here's Victor Figueroa to lead off the inning. Figueroa singled 
in the first and was stranded on third. Went to third on the ground rule double by Ryan Brown. Actually crossed the plate but was sent back to third. Mitch Slats first pitch to him is a breaking ball ball low. Over at Centerland Park softball, Wildcats lead it 6-4 to four in the top of the six. Looking for a third straight series win. Wildcats looking for a sweep here of the Delta Devils. They've already wrapped up their second straight series win with wins on Friday and Saturday. Lip threat. Deals in there for strike. Oh no, he's missed. He counts three and oh on Figueroa. There's a strike. Figueroa was taken all the way, three and one. Figueroa, a freshman from Newport Ritchie, Florida as he draws the first walk of the game issued by Lipthrax, and the leadoff man is on. Third time in four innings that the Delta Devils have had the leadoff man aboard. Weaver scored in the first. Weaver again singled and was caught stealing in the third, and now Figueroa in the fourth. Ryan Brown double back in the first inning. Yep, skipped one over the right field wall for a ground rule double. Was left stranded on second by the Chris Soder strikeout. Bunsen straight back to the mound. Lip threat, throws to second, and throws it into center field. And everybody's safe. E1? E1. He had plenty of time, too. He just kind of sailed that thing over shortstop's head. And now two on nobody out. Here's Chris Soder. Make this sure we got enough baseballs when he comes back. Uh, I think it was a nine pitch, ten pitch at bat last time. He had one over yesterday. Soder. He had at least a nine pitch at bat yesterday. And he eventually... Struck out looking. Struck out looking. Lip threat comes home with it. It's bunted foul. And the count 0 1. Soder, another Florida kid from Sarasota. A sophomore, played at Sarasota High School. After today, the Delta Devils will head back to the state of Louisiana. Lip threat deals, ball, and it's one and one as Soda really looking to lay down that bunt as they play a non-conference game against Southeastern Louisiana in Hammond, and then finally back home to Itabena for a three-game series against Jackson State. From the stretch, Lip Threat deals a strike. And it's one and two. Do you think the bunt threat's off right here or what? I'm not sure. I mean. They got nothing to lose, so. Uh, I, I would still bunt here. I would too. Cats playing back. High in the air, right side foul. And Soder, here we go again. Here we go again with that foul ball thing here. That's one. This Delta Devils team is tough to strike out at the plate. They battle, they foul a lot of balls off. Lift threats 2 2. Upstairs 3 and 2. Gonna load them up, man. Nobody out. They have only struck out 127 times, while their opponents have struck out 196 times. 3-2. 
drilled into center field. Moving over Guzman, he makes the catch. Tagging and going to third is Figueroa. He'll be there without a throw. So with one out, there's runners on the corner. And now here's Yodani Oferil Ortiz, grounded at third his first time up. Now he can use the bat. He, he may bunt. You can do a lot with this kid because of the speed. And now the corners are playing in for the Wildcats. You might want to pitch him inside. Ortiz real stands to almost say, out of the box. Yeah, stands really close to the plate, excuse me. And he pops this one up. It'll stay in play. And Escobar makes the catch for out number two. Man, we needed that. Sure did. Now with two down, here's Narvin Booker. Lined it straight to Perez his first time up. Made a nice pick over there. Hot corner has been as advertised as Perez has made three putouts early in the ball game and almost had a fourth on a foul ball. I think Ortiz has a better bet. He, he, he could have laid that ball down for him, but they let it swing away and he popped it up. Ball high. Already we have action in the Wildcat bullpen. May not be that long of a start for Luis Lipgrad. As he is up to 52 pitches. There's a strike, one and one. Valley up to four hits on the day. As Booker steps out. The former Redon High School prospect in Atlanta. Now makes his way back into the box. Had a, has a big opportunity here to put the Devil Del Delta Devils back on top. He hit the ball hard to short last time. This time he hits the ball hard, and that's going to get down in right field and go all the way to the wall. This could be two. Scoring from third is Figueroa. Holding at third is Brown. It's an RBI double for Booker, and it's two to one Delta Devils. Ryan Brown moves from first to third. Figueroa. Scores and Booker now at second, and here's Devon Mims who flied out softly to the shortstop first time up. The baseball guards say anytime you walk a guy, he's usually going to come around and score. That's just, that's the run right there from that base on ball, the error guy, the guy from third base. Upstairs, 1 0. Oh. Remember, yeah, this inning started with a walk. And then a soft chopper back to lip threat, and he tried to start a double play. He turned, spun and threw to second, threw the ball into center field, and mm -hmm. that's what started this whole rally. He's looking at the bullpen. And this might be the end for lip threat. It is. As I believe that's Pablo Torres out there, and he's gonna trot in from the left field bullpen, and that's lip threat done. So a tough start for Luis Lipthrat as he gave up two runs and is, could be responsible for two more. Lipthrat. Three innings pitch, two runs both earned. Gave up five hits. Struck out two and walked one. And now we will see Pablo Torres. Torres 0-1 in four appearances with a 5.79 ERA. Nine and a third innings pitch. He's given up six runs on 10 hits with 12 strikeouts and seven walks as the Wildcats try to work out of a, another jam here against the Delta Devils. One thing for sure, we're not, we're not afraid. We've been down before. And we always try to come back. So right now, a two to one score. It could have been a little bit larger. 
Got runners in scoring position with a pitching change. And the first inning, the Delta Devils left runners on second and third. And potentially the Wildcats are set up to have them do it again with runners on second and third and two down. But uh, VCU has been the cardiac cats this season. And it seems they always play better from behind. They like to come back and win games late. And when they're in the lead in the late innings, it's always a bit of an adventure. And I'm remembering specifically the Jacksonville game two weeks ago, where they led as by as many as four runs and lost that game nine to eight. Wildcats trying to improve their home record to 13 and five. Well, correction, 14 and five. They are 13 and 10. They've 0 and five in away games, but to be fair, those away games were FIU, Florida State, and then three at South Carolina. Everything else has been at home. So now Devon Mims steps in with two out and runners on second and third to place the New pitcher, Pablo Torres. And his first pitch is bounced to the plate, 1-0. He squared the butt. With two outs, that's a gutsy call. I guess the Wildcats aren't really playing the bunt here. He lays one down well enough. He could be standing on first. Takes a fastball low, 2-0. I remember a game last year down at Bethune Point when we played Valley, where Mississippi Valley ended up winning the game 12 to run, one by run rule. And a four pitch walk issued by Torres and the bases are loaded. And that brings up the top of the order. Here's Maury Weaver, two base hits in the game Scored in the first, was caught stealing in the third. And now you gotta throw strikes because there's nowhere to put him. Yeah, we're in a little jam here. Top of the order. Torres fires. Outside, he's thrown five straight balls. And this is exactly the what happened in that game against Mississippi Valley last year where they beat us 12 to one. I think we walked six batters in that in an inning where they scored 10 runs. They just kept bringing in new pitchers. They couldn't throw strikes. He's thrown seven straight balls now to open his stay on the mound, Pablo Torres. Just need one pitch for the ground ball right here. There you go. Nope, you it's low and it's 3-0. Torres looking for a strike. And it's in the opposite batter's box and he's walked in a run. And it is 3-1 three uh, three Delta Devils. Give Weaver the RBI. Unearned run scored. Brown scores from third and that was the error earlier in the inning coming, about, coming around to score. Booker goes to third, Mims goes to second and Weaver standing on first. Two straight balls. And now here's Davion Hall. Grounded to third his first time up and then in the third, flat out to short. Finally a strike from Torres. And the count 0-1. Good thing we're not in the Bronx. You hear that cheer. Or at Texas A&M. <laughs> Have you seen the, yeah. the fans out there do mm -hmm. their thing on consecutive balls? Fouled away 0-2. Yeah, they start counting ball seven, ball <laughs> eight. Yep. Torres, 0-2, bases loaded. Ground ball to second. 
Racing in his Tuero, we underhands to first. And finally, the side is retired. Two runs, one hit, and the bases left loaded. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Wildcats down three to one. Wildcats chasing a two-run deficit here against the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. We head to the bottom of the fourth. It's three to one. The only run across for the Wildcats with the solo homer by Moya back in the second. Pena leads off the fourth. Struck out in the second to lead off that inning. Boris has been hot of late. Let's see if he can continue. He chops one foul behind the plate, 0 and 1. Fouls another one off, 0 and 2. Pena has been playing tough. He's gonna waste it outside. It is in the opposite batter's box and Pena lays off one and two. He's been all over the place. Right now he's playing first, but he has been the DH. He's played left field. And with the injury to George Braceres, he's now the second choice behind the plate behind Irvin Escobar. This, this kid is a real utility man. He can play all positions. Foul away, still one and two. McClendon deals, breaking ball, doesn't catch the outside corner, two and two. Real slow, looping curve ball. It was way outside, though. The catcher tried to frame it back. And Perez swings and misses and goes, or excuse me, Pena swings and misses and goes down on strikes for the second time today. And here is the home run kid, Robert Moya. Hit a long bomb to left. His first time up that hit off the top of the batting cage as it was hit so far. That wind still whipping even stronger now to right field. The flag's almost standing straight out. McLennan deals upstairs. 1-0. The blast of the second was Moya's second home run of the season. And he hits another one high in the air, but he pops it straight up. Long run for two fielders, and it drops in the Mississippi Valley State bullpen as Hull came all the way in from right field, couldn't make the play, and he has stayed down as it looked like he tripped over the pitcher's mound out there in the bullpen. Yeah, he, he tripped right over the front part of the pitcher's mound in the bullpen that sloped. And he is up, up, puts his up. hat back on, and races back out to right. Good to see him up. Those, those kind of uneven surfaces when you're sprinting like that, so easy to turn an ankle or, or hip or hip or knee. Let's see if Moya can find the range again right here. His bat's hot too. He's got a 1-1 one -one count. A 
Lefty McLennan, who's pitched 46 pitches so far today. Deals. Breaking ball low. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Fastball missed inside, and it's three and one. Umpire's not calling that low pitch because even if our, our first pitcher, he threw a couple of balls in there and didn't call them strikes. Moya, high in the air to center field, not deep. Booker ranging over to his right. The wind took it a fair ways, but Booker makes the catch, and there's two away. Third catch out there in center for Booker. Hall's hit there twice, and now Moya once. Two away, here's Escobar, grounded to the shortstop his first time out. First pitch swinging from Escobar, hit in the air to right. Hall, one step from the track, makes the catch. That ball carries the right field. Yep, one, two, three, go the Cats as they still trail by two, headed to the fifth right here on the Cat Eye Network. Pablo Torres out for his second inning of work for the Wildcats, first full inning of work. He walked two, including walking in a run before inducing the inning inning ground out in the fourth. Delta Devils have a 3-1 lead. Here's Draylon Holmes, ball low, 5 corner strike one and one. Holmes, native of Griffin, Georgia, transfer from Rust. Inside corner strike, and Holmes doesn't like it as he backed away, thinking that was going to be inside. He doesn't like that inside pitch. He's taken that most of his series. Torres. Throws one right by him and strikes out Holmes. Holmes down on strikes for the second time today. And now here's Victor Figueroa who led off the last inning with a walk and eventually scored. 
as the Delta Devils set eight to the plate in the fourth. Chops one foul off his foot, 0-1. This one fouled straight back, 0-2. Well, the Wildcats have been down more than this in this series. They were down four to nothing last night and eventually rallied to win six to four. But it's looked edgy in every inning so it far it has. for the Wildcats defensively. Frame job by Escobar, not enough, and it's one and two. This one lined to right field. There's a base hit for Figueroa. And now he's been on base all three plate appearances with a single in the first, a walk in the fourth, and now a single in the fifth. And now Ryan Brown, who ground rule doubled in the first and then reached on an error and scored in the fourth. One on, one out. We'll see if Victor, Victor Figueroa tries to steal. Outside 1-0. Oh. It's a warm day out here at Jackie Robinson. A beautiful beach day, though. I see the traffic going over the bridge. 86 degrees. Runner goes. Throw down to second is... He's safe. The throw looked to be in time, but Figueroa slides around to Arrow's tag and is in there with a stolen base. So now that takes away the double play ball although I said that two innings ago and Tuero hit into a double uh, unassisted double play lined out to the shortstop and then stepped on second base that one got away from Torres Counts 2-0. Oh. Hit off the end of the bat foul. Correction, the count was 3-0. and oh. Now it's 3-1. and one. As Torres has struggled a little bit with command. This one chopped towards short. Fielded deep in the hole by Garcia, and a nice pick at first by Pena to get the out, and there's two away. Figueroa kept his head down, didn't let the runner distract him. Scooped it, threw over the first for the second out. That was a huge play. And again, a nice pick at first by Pena. Every time a, a ball comes to first from the left side of the diamond, it's been a little bit of an adventure this holding season. Our, holding our breath. For the Wildcats. Torres steps off. The Wildcats have committed 30 errors so far this season. I believe that's in the top 10 in the country wow. for uh, most errors committed. Inside corner this time called a ball and the count 2-0. and oh. This is Chris Soder struck out looking in the first to end that inning and then flew out to center in the fourth. Outside 3-0 and, oh, and another batter that has seen three straight balls from Torres. This is the fourth batter in Torres' short stay. Ball four and a four pitch walk. First and second, two out, and here's Oferiel Ortiz. Ortiz ground to third in the second, and then popped out behind the plate in the fourth. One of the things that saved us a little bit of embarrassment in that fourth inning, kept 
The Delta Devils to only two runs. You need a ground ball right here to get out of it. Torres deals a strike on the inside corner that causes Ortiz to jump back. That's the second time we've seen that. Draylon Holmes was also caught unawares by an inside corner strike in this inning. The 0 1. Grounded towards short. This will be a tough play for Garcia. Throws across the diamond and stretching for the out is Pena. Two fantastic plays by Garcia at short. No runs, one hit, two left. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Wildcats still down by two. down and six to four. Just checking in on softball real quick. They're in the top of the seventh, up by two with two outs. When that game goes final, of course, we will tell you. Here's Jeremy Garcia singled in the second to lead off the fifth for the Wildcats and a pitch upstairs and inside for ball one from McClendon. Game's over. Wildcats win. Wildcats have taken two of three from Jackson State on the softball side. Perez fouls one away, one and one. They got a little gritty going on down there at Centerland Park, too. The girls are doing the gritty down the third baseline. Low, slow curveball in there for a strike one and two. 56 pitches for Calvin McClendon and nobody warming up in the Delta Devil bullpen. Swing and a miss, and down goes Garcia. Fourth strikeout for McClendon on the day. He's got Pena twice. Perez once and now Garcia. And here is Brian Perez. And if you're the Delta Devils, you want McClendon to stay in the game as long as possible. That one low and inside. Yeah, because their bullpen is, has been come run through since Friday night. been the main reason that the Wildcats have won the both first two games of the series. On Friday night, they changed the pitcher in the sixth, and the Wildcats immediately responded with six runs in that inning. Sixth and the seventh have been our innings. Strike up and in to Perez on the count two and one. Right now, McClendon looks pretty comfortable out there. Perez, it's the third fair ball through the hole and past the diving Holmes. That gets to the corner. Turning for second and being there without a throw is Perez, and it's a double. That time, the umpire saw it. The ball landed. That's our spot down there by the clubhouse. And it, it bounced around down by the Culverson sign and stand up double. It's time to, it's time to rip the baseball, guys. Now here's Jeremiah Guzman, walked, stole second, and then was caught in the unassisted double play from Yafariel Ortiz, or Ofariel Ortiz, excuse me, in the third. That was probably the best Wildcat chance to score 
after the home run by Moya. And he looks at a fastball strike, 0-1. Because after that double play, Garrett Chun hit a first base, or actually a single down the line that would have scored the runner. Would have scored the runner from second. Upstairs, one and one. Now it's a time to take a few pitches, make him work, make him make precise pitches now. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two on Guzman. Clendon from the stretch. This ball hammered to left field. Is that going to stay fair? No. It bounces about a foot to the left of the left field line. And that takes a run away from the Wildcats as Brian Perez was already most of the way home from second. Something about that spot down there is unique here at this ballpark. That little one area in left field down the third baseline. One, two to Guzman. He swings and misses, and it's the fifth strikeout from McClendon. And there are two away, and here's Luis Tuero. Tuero hit by a pitch and then caught in a double play in the first and then lined into a double play in the third. He's overdue now. He's been hitting the ball well, too, this season. Opportunity right here with a guy at second base for a run. A chip away. Second on the team in batting average with a 344 is Tuero. And he hits this one in the air to left field, not deep. Going back, Ortiz makes the catch to end the inning. Again, the Wildcats strand a runner at second. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the sixth, still 3-1 Delta Devils. Narvin Booker leads off the sixth inning for the Delta Devils. As they are close to their first conference win of the season. They lead three to one here in the sixth. And Pablo Torres back on the mound for his second full inning of work. Got out of a little bit of a jam in the fifth. Stranded runners on first and second. The Devils have left seven runs, or seven runners on base. Excuse me, swing and a miss. Nice fastball that time. Yeah, the game is closer than it should be. A lot of runners left on base. 
Swing and a miss again, and down on strikes goes Booker. Second strikeout for Torres. We got Holmes to lead off the last inning, and now Booker to lead off this inning. Here's Devon Mims. Mims softly flied out to short his first time up and then walked and was stranded on second to fourth. That's the inning where MVSU scored two runs and left the bases loaded. Inside corner, strike at the knees, 0-1. Pablo Torres came into this inning with 32 pitches thrown. Nobody working the Wildcat bullpen right now. Hits softly to second. Tuero fires, and there are two away. Top of the order, here's Maury Weaver. He's been on base all three times. Singleton scored in the first. Singleton was caught stealing in the sec in the third and walked in the fourth. Got an RBI in the afternoon with that walk, too. Yeah, because that was the walk to walk in. Brown from third. Swing and a miss at a fastball outside corner. Torres seems to be yeah, he's finding his groove. He seemed to settle in with that fastball. This fastball is really popping and moving toward the right side, like almost like a slider. Another swing and a miss. And that one time it was on the inside corner on the hands. And we know that the umpire behind the plate's been given those inside corner strikes in this game, much to the chagrin of a lot of the Mississippi Valley State batters. Torres strikes him out, and one, two, three, go the Delta Devils. Nice quick inning for Torres, and I think he only threw eight pitches. I think he's found his groove. Let's see how long we stay with him. One, two, three, go the Devils. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and it's still a 3-1 Valley lead. Some tough love by hitting coach Jose Carballo to the Wildcats in between innings. Is My question is, was he speaking in Espanol or was he speaking in English? And maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, he was animated down there. He did that same thing yesterday, and that broke open the ball game after that, man. The Cats went and scored five runs in the bottom half of the uh, seventh inning, sixth inning. McClendon's been pitching well. He gets an inside corner strike on Garrett Chun. Sean grounded into a 6-4-3 double play in the first. Singleton was stranded at first in the third. This will be his 70th pitch right here. And no signs of tiring for McClendon. A junior from Lena, Mississippi. Transfer from East Central Community College. This one got away from him in the opposite batter's box, and Brown had to dive for it. But it is important for the Wildcats to try and chase McClendon out of this game and try and eat away at that Valley bullpen that has been suspect in this series. This one hit high in the air down the left field line. Tracking it is Mims. He does. He can't make the play. And the ball lands in foul territory. Well, here we go again. This is the inning that the Cats have really done damage. We saw the same thing happen yesterday. The center fielder misplayed the ball in this same inning, and it gave the Cats some life. 
I'm not going to give him an error because that was a tough no, play. He didn't touch it, so and give, him a sink, give him the double, man. And I, I think maybe that's just because of the wind. The ball was hit straight out to left, and the wind that's blowing in the opposite way took it away from Mims, who was charging it down the left field line. And now, here comes head coach Milton Barney to talk to his infield, and the Wildcats have the leadoff man aboard. for the third time in the ball game. And you got the hottest hitter in the SWAT conference, Highland Hall at, at the plate. And he's flied out to center twice. Not to say that in this situation that's a bad thing, because if he hits that ball far enough to center, it sends the runner to third. But we'd like him to put something on the green here, please, Highland. He put one on the green in South Carolina, 418-foot homer. He gets this one down to the outfield, and likely Chun will score from second, and we'll have a one-run game. But Hall over two with two flyouts to center. He's hit the ball hard, and he watches this one go in the opposite batter's box for ball one. Hall, the transfer from Washington State, and he's on pace right now for a first team all swack offensive performance this season, hitting nearly 400. They're not gonna give him anything to hit. They might walk him. Highland might be the tallest guy on the team. Another one, outside. Yo went up to talk to him today. He's taller than me. He's about 6'6", six, six, almost 6'3". Six, six, he's listed at 6'3", 200, originally from Okoe in the Orlando area. The count is 3-0. and oh. I'd expect this one to be outside as well. It's in there for a strike, and the count 3-1. and one. Hall was taken all the way. Now, is the intentional walk rule? You should just say in, put him on first. Yeah, because you know, yeah, I know you can in the majors now. You can just say put him on first without throwing four pitches. Spinning a throw back to second. Sliding back in there is Chun. Stats is frozen. Yeah, it's only updating in between innings. I okay. just talked to Bryce about that. Ball low, and Hall walks. So you were correct. They put him on first. Although I don't think that was intentional because it then didn't he, miss he by hit the much. tie and run, so he comes around. And now Boris Pena, who struck out twice today, facing McClendon for the third time in a really critical spot here. Two on, nobody out, Cats down by two. And you got some action going on down in the Budweiser bullpen. And unfortunately, whoever's getting warmed up for the Delta Devils has a warm-up jacket on, so we can't see his number. A couple of guys are warming up with the, uh, with the bands. The catcher's getting ready. And then you got the guy number 42, who, who's uh, the brace for the catcher. Uh, he just took, just his, took it off. Yep. Took it off. So when he turns around, we'll see his number 34. Lefty. That is Azalius Lewis is warming up in the bullpen for Mississippi Valley State. But here's a big spot for Pena. He's hit two three run home runs already this season, has Pena. But as I said, he's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts today, so McClendon has had his number. Pena squares to bunt, puts it down the first baseline, foul. Got a little bit of a bad rotation on that ball. Great move to move these runners over. You got that, you'll have that speed at second base, mm -hmm. base hit, tie the game. So his job is to move these runners right now. Yeah. And I guess it's a good call if you've got a guy that's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, not really his day at the plate, just try and be useful, move the runners over. But now, Valley playing the corners in. This time, Pena sits on it and takes a ball outside. He didn't square around either. No. I'm wondering if he showed bunt, and now he's going to pull it back and just try and dink one over the corner and down the line. Swings at that one, fouls it back one and two. Uh, 
I don't know what it is about games that we do together here, Daryl, but we get the long ones. The Stetson game was almost four hours. This one creeping up towards three hours, and we're still only in the sixth. And before we know it, the Florida Gators will be in the final four. Outside, two and two. Trying to get home and watch a little basketball. Yeah. San Diego State and Creighton playing right now for spot in the final San Diego four. State has some monsters on his team. Pena drills this one to center, and it's going to be caught by Booker, and unfortunately, Chun didn't tag, so he stays at second. Yeah. It was a little shallow. With Chun's speed, he might have been able to make it, but they're not testing him. And now here's Robert Moya, two on one man out. This is the guy you want to see at the plate. Moya. He's coming up hacking. Hit the home run in the second, which is the only Wildcat run so far, and then fly out to center in the fourth, but that was a deep shot as well. Clendon deals. Down the middle, strike one. Clendon, 80 pitches plus now into his outing. He's given up only one run on five hits. Breaking ball misses outside. That's just a setup pitch. His fastball is what he's going to use right now. Two on, one out. Here's the one one. Oh! oh! Cracks this one to left. If it stays fair, it's gone. It is foul. That one went farther than the home run he hit in the second inning, but it did not stay fair, and the count is one and two. How lucky you are. How lucky the wind is blowing toward right field. Oh, he got all of that one. <laughs> now he's got to settle in and do it again, this time with a two-strike count. Watch the breaking ball in the dirt. McClendon shakes off a pitch, now nods his head. From the stretch, he deals. This time ripped to third. Could be two, but it hits the Holmes, the third baseman in the chest, and everybody is safe, and Holmes stays down. Wildcats get a little bit of luck, and the bases are loaded. Hmm. You give him a base hit on that, or you give him the, what you give him the error? I think I give him a base hit. That was a tough play. It popped right into his chest. But man, I'm going back to that long ball. We were a couple feet to the right from uh, being up by one. Moya has crushed the ball today. He's hit the ball hard every time. The home run in the second, the long fly out, which missed the home run to dead center by about five feet. And then that foul ball three pitches ago that's why you have to have one of these down there. Uh huh. That's what happened. We'll have a hope that Draylon Holmes is all right. He is still down. The Cats have the bases loaded. Bases loaded, but they do have one out. Coming up next is Irvin Escobar, who has grounded to short and popped out to right. So I'm wondering if Coach Hernandez is thinking about potentially throwing in a pitch hitter here. Escobar is in the on-deck circle, the sophomore from Barceloneta, Puerto Rico. If Holmes continues to stay down, Figueroa ran to the bench to get him some water. Well, it's already a victory Sunday for the Wildcats. Softball with the series victory against Jackson State, taking that series two games to one. They have won each of their first three series two to one, dropping the middle game every time. This also gives the bullpen a chance to get warm. Now, we got speed down at second base, Highland Hall at second. Chun at third, Hall at second, Moy on first. And Irvin Escobar set to come to the plate. 
in a massive, massive spot for the Wildcats with one down. Do you think this stoppage hurts the batter more or the pitcher more in this situation? They just the got to wait. I think it hurt the pitcher. He's over, he's over talking to Moy at first base. The pitcher is. <laughs> just trying to stay loose. Yeah. Probably going over there saying, hey, man, you hit, you've hit two tanks off me today. I'm glad that second one went foul. <laughs> And his Mc I think McClendon's done. He's walking to the dugout. Oh, no, he's just throwing his, he had a throwing cup his, of water. Throwing his water cup away. I think this hurts his rhythm because he had a great rhythm, even though we were uh, struggling to hit him. He had a great rhythm. This could play a huge part. You know, we saw the same thing happen last night. Uh, he loaded the bases up. Routine fly ball to center field right at the twilight, right when the sun was going down and the center fielder couldn't find it and it bounced in front of him. Two outs and three runs scored. A very similar situation right now with the bases loaded, one down, and a game where the Wildcats are down two. It looks like Draylon Holmes will remain in the game after getting treatment there at third base after a ripped line drive hit him in the chest area. He stayed down for a couple of minutes, and now McClendon will... Walk slowly back to the mound. One of only two parts of this field that is not turf. The mound in the area behind home plate dirt. You know who I'm sure loves that. Mm -hmm. The uh, grounds crew. Gra the grounds crew, but also the equipment managers for both the Tortugas and Bethune Cook. Not, not, not many dirty players. Though. Nope. Outside ball one. A lot less a lot of uh, room to the right side. The center field is shading him toward left. Well, Escobar is a pull hitter, but that one's in the dirt 2 0. Oh, and maybe you're right that McClendon lost his rhythm a little bit. I think if you're Escobar, you just make him throw a strike. You take until you mm -hmm. get one. Got to. The Wildcats walked in a Valley State run in the fourth. That time, a strike right down the middle. Now Escobar's got to be aware at the plate. Can't hit into a double play here. Short starts playing kind of deep, too. He's playing that double play ball. Inside, almost hit Escobar. It's three and one. Now what do you do? Take here. You take. take get, your, get that run back that um, you walked in, and you take your chances with the next batter. The base is loaded with one down. Here's the 3-1 pitch from McClendon, swing and a miss. Not sure if that was a slider or a fastball that just kind of dropped away. Yeah, it would have been a strike too. So, so now three and two. With the bases loaded, McClendon, Escobar hits base it hit. up the middle, there's a base hit. Coming home to score is Chun. Whole rounds third. Here's the throw to the plate. It's not in time. And the Wildcats have tied the game with a two RBI single. That's why they call them the Cardiac Cats. This has been the inning in this series where the Cats have done some damage. And it did, did it again this afternoon. Worked a 3-2 count. Escobar drilled it right up the middle for the base hit. Two runs scored. Chun scored from third. Highland Hall was on his heels from second. And how about that as a big old confidence booster for Irvin Escobar at the plate. Remember, he's been playing behind George Berseris for the better part of this season. Because of Berseris' bat, but he has a stronger arm and, and better tools behind the plate. And if Escobar can prove that he's reliable at the plate, even if Berseris recovers from that hand injury, I think it might be Escobar's spot to lose. But, you can play him at DH or all the way at first base, too, for Saris. Mm -hmm. Ball one to Jeremy Garcia. Two on, one out. Garcia hits one in the air to right. Racing over, and Hull can't make the play. Unfortunately, Moya tagged at second, so he only gets to third. Escobar goes to second, Garcia to first, and the bases are loaded again. Here's Brian Perez. Four hits in the end, and the Wildcats bats are waking up. Bases loaded, one down. Bullpen's going. I think that injury did hurt the pitcher. He had, he had a groove going. He's thinking out there now instead of pitching. 
Wildcats have loaded the bases for the second time in the inning. And here's Brian Perez. Struck out in the second and hit a rocket double in the fifth. Another one like that, the Wildcats will lead the ball game. Azalius Lewis still throwing in the Mississippi Valley State bullpen. First pitch misses above the letters, ball one. It's been close to 100 pitches now. Yeah, we don't have an accurate pitch count as our stats are only updating between innings. Here's a 1-0. Missed his spot, 2-0. I know the scoreboard still says three to one, but it is three to three. Wildcats have played a two in the inning. On a two run single by Escobar. Inside, strike at the knees. He's been giving that pitch all day. The he inside, has. The inside pitches. And it might be forcing some batters to maybe back away from the plate a little bit in the box. Here's a two one. Swung on, hit off the end of the bat to center. Moving over is Booker. He makes the catch. Moya tags from third. He will score. Moving to third is Escobar. He is safe, and the Wildcats have the lead. It's four to three. Give him a sacrifice fly and an RBI. The center field. How do you like that, Brian Perez? BP, are you with me? Here's a man who was only batting .95 on the average on the season coming into the game. He has two hard hit balls to center field, one a double and one a sack fly. He's going to earn his way onto the lineup again next week. And here we've got Manny Suffrain pinch hitting for Jeremiah Guzman. Bringing a lefty against a lefty. Great call. Runners on the corners with two down. Wildcats now at a 4-3 lead. Suffrain off the end of the bat, foul. As chasing after that was Holmes, he couldn't catch up to it. Looks like that came almost came off his hands or the taped part of the bat. The count 0-1. Every time Suffrain comes to the bat, you remember those, those giant bombs he hit early in the season, so you look for that bat to have some pop in it. Escobar at third, Garcia at first. Suffrain in off the bench. And he hits this one towards second base, ranging to his left, Weaver. He throws to first to end the inning. Three runs, four hits, two left. The Wildcats take a 4-3 lead, and we go to the seventh right here on the Cat Eye Network. We go to the seventh inning and the Wildcats have once again 
turned it around in the middle of the late innings. Pablo Torres back out on the mound. Davion Hull leads off the seventh for Mississippi Valley State. He's 0 for 3 with two ground outs to the middle infield and a soft fly out to short. Let's see if they got any more fight left in them. This is when they usually fall. Fouled back to the screen, 1-1. One one. Something about this club, man. It, you just have a resilience. I talked to Coach Hernandez about it before the game, how their approach to the plate late innings. Pablo Torres up to 42 pitches now. Foul to the plate, the count 0-2. He came in with two outs in the fourth, had a rough opening, walked two straight batters, including walking in a run, but has settled down since then and only allowed one hit. Davion Hull hits this one in the air toward right field and That's deep, and that here. is out of here. Holland Hall watches it go, and we got a tie ball game as Hull powers this one. He got it up into the wind, and the breeze did the rest, and it's 4-4. Four to four. So now both teams have a solo homer in the ball game. And now here's the man with all the homers for Mississippi Valley State. Draylon Holmes, who remember was down with an injury. Not sure how he's feeling after that. He stayed in the game. He's grounded a short and struck out twice and he's quickly behind 0-2. Yeah, that slider he's been missing, he's still showing signs of that pain. This one in the dirt wanted to. Pablo Torres, just a freshman from Orlando. Played his high school ball at Central Point Christian Academy, a very mm -hmm. good athletic program great in all program. sports. Yeah, great program over there. Volleyball state champions on the girls side this year. Central Point. This one hit on a line to right, and that's going to drop in front of Hall for a base hit. Well, the Delta Devils have some fight left in them. Back to back hits. They do indeed, and now here's Victor Figueroa, who let off the really damaging fourth through a walk and eventually came around to score on the RBI double by Narvin Booker. One on, nobody out, one in already in the inning on the solo shot by Hall. He's putting the oven mitten on, looking forward to stealing second base. Wildcats have a man in the bullpen. Pablo throws back to first again, trying to keep Holmes honest. Holmes only eight steals on 11 attempts this season, not nearly to the level of some of the guys on this team. Upstairs. Our bullpen's going. Ball one. And I'm trying to wait for the guy who's over there to turn his back so I can see who's out there. Might be Dale Mashad. Outside, 2-0. Torres upstairs, 3-0. He's already issued three walks. One of them scored a run. He walks a guy here, they don't pull him. Burt, the guy in the bullpen is warm. He's actually coming in now. I believe it's Michaud. There's a strike. Just threw one right down the middle. You need a cheap out right here, a pop-up or a ground ball for the DP. Figueroa taken all the way. 
Wildcats have only turned seven double plays on the season. And that uh. one misses outside. It was close, but Figueroa walks, and there's two on, nobody out. And that's going to be the end for Pablo Torres. A bit of an up and down outing on the mound for Torres. Gave up two runs, one earned on the home run. Struck out three and got a one, two, three inning in the sixth. But he's a middle innings guy, not really intended to go that long. Threw over 50 pitches. Well, he did his job. He's a setup guy. And he's setting up for. I still can't tell, but I think it's Dale Machad. It is not. Looks like number 25. We don't have a 25 on the roster. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, it is Dale Machon. So Dale Machad comes in. He pitched a little bit yesterday. He's two and zero in nine appearances with a 2.81 ERA. 16 innings pitch, he's given up five runs on 13 hits, 15 strikeouts, and just seven walks. Opponents batting 213 against him. He gave him problems yesterday because he's kind of half sidewinder. He's kind of three quarter guy. He gave him a couple of problems. And Michaud in to now try and get out of this jam. Two on, nobody out, one in already in the inning to tie the game. Wildcats ran through the Delta Devils on Friday, 13 to three in a run rule win. Then had to come from behind yesterday and eventually won that one six to four. Have come from behind already today with three in the sixth. They had a four three lead and then the solo shot by Davion Hull made it a four to four ball game. That was the third home run of the season by Hall. Now he's second on the team in long balls behind Draylon Holmes with six. And here's Ryan Brown, the catcher, at a ground rule double in the first. Reached on an error to Luis Lipthrat and scored via the walk in the fourth and grounded out the fifth short. Corners are in. Perhaps expecting a bunt. It is a bunt. It is foul. Just important for Mashad to work out of this jam without giving up any more runs. And maybe we'll see a bullpen action for Mississippi Valley. They had Azalius Lewis warming up for the better part of two innings now, but McClendon got out of the jam, to be fair. Throw down a second. And Holmes scampers back. The count is 2-0. Oh. Well, correct, correction, the count is 1-1. One and, one. and Escobar will relay instructions to the infield. We'll see if Brown decides to square up and butt again. Wouldn't be surprised. With two on, nobody out. And the side armor deals, butted foul, and it's two and two. That was a weird defensive play. Did yeah. you Shortstop uh, came in front of the runner to cover third base. He's holding the runner at second. He jetted out in front of the runner and sprinted over the third because the third baseman was, was covering the, the bunt. Now with two strikes, I don't think that Brown will lay down a bunt again. He might. 
He swings and hits it high in the air to left. Moving back, Sean, he stays under it and makes the catch. Trying to go to third is Holmes, he is safe. Going to second, and Figueroa is safe. So the sacrifice fly to left, moves Holmes to third, and Figueroa to second, and the Delta Devils are set up. Second and third, one out, and here's Chris Soder. Coach Hernandez wants to talk to the umpire. Soder struck out looking to end the first, popped out to center in the fourth, and walked in the fifth and was stranded there. I'm not sure what argument Coach Hernandez has. Well, your boy's still laboring on at third base, man. But fair play to him, he came in, hit a hard single and has advanced a third in the inning. Now sacrifice plate the run for the Delta Devils and gives them the lead back. <clears throat> Playing halfway. Cut that runner down at home. First pitch from Mashad, swing and a miss by Soder. The job for Mashad here is to throw stuff down in the zone and do soft contact and get out of this inning. Swing and a miss from Soder, and it's 0-2. Strike out a loom large right here. Yes, it would. That would take the sacrifice play away from Valley. Slide on the outside part of the plate. Soder takes the bat off his shoulder and Mashad deals. Swung on, hit up the middle, there's a base hit, could be two. Scoring is Holmes. Figueroa rounds third, he'll score without a throw. Three in the, in the inning on the two RBI single by Soder. And it is six to four. So the exact opposite of what we thought was gonna happen today has happened. Pinch hitter. No, it's a, here's Ortiz. Oh, Ortiz. What's the umpire doing? Oh, he's trying to. Pinch runner okay. might be. But anyway, Ortiz is in the backer's box. He's 0 for three, two ground out to the middle infield and a pop out to the catcher behind the plate. One on, one out, three in. As Mississippi Valley State has responded to the three runs in the bottom of the sixth by the Wildcats with three of their own in the seventh, take a 6-4 lead. It ain't over till it's over. Runner shows steal, then Soder gets back to first. And this is the first time in the series that the Wildcat bullpen has really showed some signs of struggle. Usually it's been the Wildcat pitching that's picked up the Cats. Soder, or correction, that's a pinch runner. Running at first is Eric Johnson. Tried to steal, but the pitch was fouled off. He goes back to first. Throw to first. And safe is Johnson from Escobar's throw. Escobar's not afraid to sling that thing, you know. He, he's caught a runner going at, he's trying to steal second. He's been close on his pickoff attempts. The pitch to Ortiz. Outside runner goes. Throw is over the head of Perez and into center field. Soder goes down to second on the steal and runner on second with one down. Counts two and two on Ortiz.
Runner going again. This time he throws down to third. This time, oh, he's, he's oh. safe. He dropped the ball. Because Perez dropped the ball. He had him out by two steps. But the contact with the helmet of Johnson popped the ball out of Perez's glove, and it's a second straight stolen base. And now, another runner 90 feet away with one down. And a full count to Ortiz. Hit on the ground is short. Throw back to third. Ortiz is safe. Now he's hurt. Ortiz reaches on the fielder's choice. Soder slides back to third safely. Odd decision by Garcia. Just prevents the run. And they should have just checked him and thrown, thrown the runner out at first. Yeah, because I think if he checks him, the runner doesn't go. Soder now hops back to his feet. Seventh batter of the inning, here's Narvin Booker. Run at first, gonna be taken off. He's one for three with two RBIs, bunted down the first baseline. There's no play anywhere as nobody covered first. And it's seven to four as Soder scores from third. It's that small ball game, you're running and you're bunting and uh, caught the Wildcats out of position that time and he bunted to, right to the first baseman. Nobody was covering first. He, he'd have done better throwing home. Eighth batter of the inning. Here's Devon Mims. And now Narvin Booker has three RBIs today on two hits. Mims 0 for 2 with a walk. First pitch to him, bunted foul, third base side. They're still small balling it. This is their game. It's been a tough outing for Gail Mashad. Nobody in the bullpen warming either. And now with the lead, a three-run lead. Swing and a miss, and it's strike two on Mims. Three-run lead potentially more. I would not be surprised to see Calvin McClendon come back out to pitch the bottom of the seventh as Mississippi Valley State has had a lot of time to rest. And it looks like, okay, where, where, I'm watching him now. He's, Getting his glove and tying his shoes up. He may be coming back in. Ball outside. Still only one out, right? Yep, still only one down. The fly ball to left from Ryan Brown. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball, and down goes Mims, and there's two away. Top of the order from Maury Weaver. Two for three with a walk and a run scored. Struck out in the sixth to end that inning. Which was only the second time that the Delta Devils have gone down one, two, three. Went quietly in the second and the sixth. Runners go to third, here's the throw. He's off the bag and out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, that's two out. No, it's three yeah, outs. Three out, oh, for real, out. Ortiz is caught stealing to end the inning. Maury Reaver will be in the box when we start the bottom of well, the top of the eighth, but we go to the bottom of the second after four runs come in on four hits and two left. Valley takes a 7-4 lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh.
Wildcats back down by three. It's their largest deficit of the game, and Luis Tuero leads off the seventh inning. Got to try and continue their offensive momentum from the sixth where they scored three runs. Calvin McClendon throws his 101st pitch, and it's a strike up and in. He'd probably throw 130. No reason to take him out with the Devils having a 3-1 lead. Liner off the glove of Weaver and into right field. There's a base hit by Tuero. Here we go again, guys. Yep. Chun led off the sixth with a double. He eventually scored, as well as in Highland Hall and Robert Moya. And here's Garrett Chun to the plate. Tuero has his first hit of the game. He was 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch before that. Now here's Garrett Chun. I guess McClendon deals upstairs ball one. I think the maybe the best case scenario for the Wildcats is they've seen McClendon now four times, the fourth time through the order. And they've gotten a beat on him. It's been at a throw back to first. And McClendon now at 105 pitches. That could be looming large in the next inning. You gotta take some pitches here. Now they're not taking that one as it's ripped foul down the first baseline. McClendon fakes the throw to first. Really doesn't want Tuero to steal. Ripped down the left field line and foul. Hits the wall in front of the clubhouse. And there's two strikes on Chun. Oh. The wheels are turning right here. But Wildcats are hitting the ball hard. They're seeing McClendon's pitches and he's definitely dropped off a bit in velocity in the last two innings. But that's about getting it down in fair territory. Look how close to the line the left fielder Mims is playing. About five steps from the left field line. McClendon deals upstairs. There's a lot of room in the gap. Two and two. Center field is shaded toward left. Takes a pitch upstairs, three and two. That was a tough one to lay off of, especially from this angle. That was a good layoff because if we can get a runner on on a walk or a base hit right here, that'll put two runners on. That was a great take. Here's the full count delivery. Swung on, hit off the end of the bat to left. It's in foul territory. Mims makes the catch right on the dugout mound. And there's one away. And now here's Highland Hall. Hit the ball hard. The first two times he came up and flied to center both times and then walked and eventually scored in the sixth. And Hall was walked intentionally with big old scare quotes <laughs> in the last inning. Walked on he's five him, pitches. We've seen him four times now. Let's see if he can throw a bead on his fastball. Throwing back to first and Luke. Luis Tuero is there again. Mississippi Valley trying to win their first conference game of the season. Currently 0-5. And, and that's a liner to short. And it's caught by Ortiz. Man, he has had a fantastic game over there. You had a little guy out of Kissimmee, Florida. He had him play perfectly. Line drive right to him. Two down. That's his fourth put out of the contest, including the unassisted double play to break the Wildcats' momentum in the third. Here's Boris Pena, open three, two strikeouts and a fly to center, now two down. Pena takes a breaking ball up by his helmet, and it's 1-0. And another breaking ball, this time misses in the dirt, 2-0. Oh. 
We got a soft toss going on down in the Mississippi Valley bullpen. Yeah. I, I, it probably is Lewis again, who's been in there twice, but McClendon has worked out of every jam he's been in. Down and they haven't, haven't forced him to take him out. And of course, Milton Barney does not want to take the starter out because he knows that the bullpen is a little shaky. Shortstop Ortiz playing on the outfield grass. Pena takes a strike, it's two and one. Let's see if the Wildcats can extend the inning. Line drive to center, and for the second straight time, Booker makes the catch, and down go the Wildcats. No runs, one hit, one left. And we go to the eighth inning. Delta Devils with a three-run lead, seven to four. Dale Mashad back in for his second inning of work. Unfortunately, the seventh was big for Mississippi Valley as they played in four runs. And the Wildcats down to six outs on offense to make up the three run deficit. And it might be more as here's Maury Weaver. As the Delta Devils sent eight to the plate in the seventh inning. He also did that in the fourth inning. Yep. And that's where they've done their damage. Both yeah. strikes, guys. One in the fourth, or one in the first, two in the fourth, four in the seventh. And that's the seven runs for Mississippi Valley State. For the Wildcats, one in the second, three in the sixth, and that's it for them. On a 2-0 pitch, Michaud files a strike. Outside, three and one. Calvin McClendon, who is fired seven complete innings for the Delta Devils. This one hit high in the air behind the plate. Escobar has a beat on it and makes the catch for out number one. Great play. That's the hardest play to make as a catcher. The ball hits straight up, and you, you got to hold your head back, and you got to throw your mask, and hopefully you don't step on it. And he made a great play with the ball tailing back in toward home plate. Here's Davion Hall, who got the party started in the seventh with a solo shot to right center for his third of the season. And he hits this one, first pitch swing into second. Suero to first in time, and there's two away. Guerrero's kind of getting his, his, his cogs over there at second base. In for the injured Colton Olison, who hasn't played at all this series. Here's the big guy. Here's Draylon Holmes with two down. Breaking ball misses inside. The 
1-0 is hit right back up the middle under the glove of Michaud into center. And Holmes has his second hit in as many innings. Gonna go to second. He is gonna go to second and he's in there with a double. Excellent awareness by Draylon Holmes as the... Yeah, Malik Stevens just kind of nonchalant at the ball in center field and he took a turn at first and saw that um, Stevens hadn't even picked the ball up yet, so he took, took off to second. Now he's in scoring position. With two down, here's Figueroa. Figueroa pitch outside. Victor singled and was stranded on third in the first, walked and scored in the fourth. Singled and was stranded on second in the fifth and walked and scored in the seventh. And he hits this one hard in the left center and deep. Going back, Stevens. It's one hop off the wall. Holmes scores from second as Figueroa places him with a double. Eight runs in the game for Mississippi Valley State and they have a four-run lead. That's what's dangerous. They got a four-run lead, but that's been what we've been chipping at the whole series, those four-run leads. And we, we have not been able to keep them off the base paths in not this today. game. That's the 11th hit of the contest for the Delta Devils. It's going to go to the bullpen. And we'll see what options we have out there. This being the third game of the series. Michaud pitched two days in a row. And jogging in from left field is the new pitcher for the Wildcats. This will be their fifth or fourth pitcher of the game. And it is Gabriel Perez. Perez, one and one in eight appearances, no starts, with a 6.52 ERA, 10 runs on 14 hits, eight strikeouts, two walks. He's given up three home runs. And as he gets warm, and the Wildcats is trying to hang close in this one, and the job is growing ever tougher for the Wildcat offense with six outs left to play with. But they're the Cardiac Cats, so <laughs> it's not over till it's over. Let's see what happens the next six outs. Well, We've seen stranger things happen. They have had the excitement turned against them a couple times this season. Against Jacksonville, they were in the lead and lost. Against Longwood, they were in the lead and lost. Against Lehigh, first game of the season, they were in the lead and lost, so. They have dropped three games from winning positions this season. Now they have rescued a lot more games from losing positions than that. Yeah. But you, know, you can't always rely on late inning heroics to get the job done as it's just been a poor pitching day for the Wildcats. Delta Devils have hit the ball 12 times. And have drawn five walks. 17 base runs. And both of the doubles in this inning, including the run for Holmes, have come with two outs. And Michaud got two quick outs on five pitches, and we thought, hey, this might be quick. And Draylon Holmes doubled, and Figueroa replaced it. The breaking ball strike on Ryan Brown. Brown hit a ground rule double in the first, reached on an error, and scored in the fourth. And then flied out to left and grounded to short. Breaking ball inside corner, misses ball one. We'll be right back here at the Jack on Tuesday at 6 p.m. as the Bulls of South Florida come to town. 
going four pitchers deep into the bullpen today for the Wildcats. Doesn't bode well for that game on Tuesday because you only get one day of rest. Mm. I forgot I didn't think about that. You don't want to go too deep. We've gone deep, though. Not many pitches. Foul ball at home plate, one and two. After that, next weekend is a pivotal three-game series right here at the Jack against Florida A&M. That's March 31st and April 1st and 2nd, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A series that if the Wildcats win it, will put them in the driver's seat. In the Eastern Conference of the SWAC, swing and a miss, ball in the dirt. Escobar throws over to third or first to end the inning. One run, two hits, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Wildcats down by four and looking for some Jackie Robinson magic. Calvin McClendon on to pitch the eighth. This marks his longest appearance of the season by innings. Went seven innings in a 12-5 win against Arkansas Pine Bluff last month. And he's currently sitting at 112 pitches. And in the game against Pine Bluff, he threw 114. So three pitches this inning from McClendon will give him his longest outing of the year pitches wise as well and here's Robert Moy up solo homer in the second fly it out to center in the fourth Singleton scored in the seventh there's a ball low and it's one and one well, I'll tell you what Narvin Booker has got a lot of action out there in center field today as he rips this one foul one and two Booker's had a lot of action this series in yeah. center field. From my calculations, he has six putouts in the game. The one, two. Foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. And now Calvin McClendon has surpassed his longest outing of the season, pitch count wise, with pitch 115. Boy up, fouls it off at home, he stays alive. McClendon, a really excellent outing today. And he's pitching from the stretch. We talked about that early in the ball game, how he's more comfortable from the stretch than he is from a windup. Four strikeouts. He's allowed eight hits, but he scouted them, and he only really got in trouble in the sixth, giving up those three runs. Moya hit off the end of the bat and rifled to right field for a base hit. Takes the turn at first and heads back. So that's to Moya. Moya three for four with a home run. Still chomping at the bat. And now is, here's Irvin Escobar, who's one for three, but that one was a two RBI single an inning ago. Here we go again. One on first. Nice. 
Escobar watches strike one down the middle. Bullpen is active now, number 34. You'd think now with 120 pitches for McClendon, as there's a ball upstairs, 1-1. One, one, you, you gotta think that he's got a short leash here. But we gotta pull on it. Low and inside, two and one. Wildcats have had the leadoff man on. Five times out of eight innings today. Ball in the dirt, Moya stays at first. Three and one. It was a violent mask throw from Brown. It ended up halfway to the mound. I think he slung it off just by it's spinning around trying to get to the ball. It came off his off his you see. He can't even get it back on his helmet. Here's the three one pitch by McClendon. Inside okay. ball four almost hit him and we've Here got comes. two on nobody out. Here it comes. That's that's it. That's the hook. And Calvin McClendon. He's going to be taken out before any damage can really be attributed to him. Fabulous outing from McClendon today. 121 pitches. Four runs all earned. 10 hits, no, nine hits, excuse me. Walk two, struck out five. But still a fabulous day for McClendon and he can go put some ice on that arm and hopefully get ready for a ride back. Or hopefully for him, get ready for a victorious ride back. But it's not over. It is not over. Here Cardiac is cats, man. the reliever for Mississippi Valley State. Elizalius Lewis, and Lewis has been sitting over there in the bullpen sweating since the sixth inning. <laughs> he warmed up, he sat down, he warmed up, he sat down, and now he's finally in the game. Maybe he's around 60 pitches himself in the bullpen. Lewis is 0-4 in seven appearances with four starts. He's got a 12.42 ERA. It's 16 and two-thirds innings pitch. He's given up 25 runs on 32 hits. Struck out 17 and walked seven. And if trends continue, this is the Wildcats' time to jump on it. Cardiac, they have, cardiac cats, man, I'm gonna keep saying it. They, have jumped, cardiac cats. they have jumped on the bullpen in all three games. Uh, yesterday it was Jose Salazar Ortega. Uh, on Friday it was James Snipes. But, Worrying figure for the Wildcats is now they've only got six outs to give instead of the nine or 12 they've had in the previous two games and they're down by four, which is their largest deficit of the game and tied for the largest deficit of the series. They were down four nothing before eventually winning six four yesterday. And now to face Lewis, here's Jeremy Garcia. Garcia, two for three with two base hits. And a strikeout sandwiched in between. First pitch to him outside, 0-1. Make, well, make him throw a strike. Yeah, that's been the thing with the Valley State's pitching staff, especially yesterday, and they struggled to throw strikes. Your approach right now is much different than it was when you had McClendon in the game. That one low, 2-0. I would not take the bat off the shoulder if, unless he throws one strike on you. Make him throw one. Lewis steals strike on the outside corner, two and one. Lewis, on 
Another lefty out of the bullpen. He'll work from the stretch. Here's a 2-1. Inside, 3-1. And, and that is a call that pitchers have been getting today. But this time the umpire does not raise the finger. 3-1. From the stretch, Lewis fires, and it's, oh, it's a strike. And it's three and two. Garcia threw the bat away and was almost out of the batter's box before he was rung up on strike two, and now it's a full count. Here's a payoff. Swung on, hit in the air to center, not deep. Booker stands under it. Makes the catch. Moya is held at third by a terrific throw from Booker. He's another guy that's had a fantastic day defensively to go along with Oferiel Ortiz at short. Yeah, he's the guy I, I was talking to before the ball game calling him Mookie Betts because he has a similar build and style. He plays just like Mookie Betts. Here's Brian Perez. One for three. Had a double in the fifth. Struck out in the second and flat out to center in the sixth. Two aboard, one out. Wildcats in desperate need of some offense down by four. It's bounced to the plate, the ball gets away. The runners will advance on the pass ball. We've got 71 fans watching in right now. Thank you for spending your yeah. Sunday afternoon with us on the Cat Eye Network. I know there's, there's basketball on. There's a lot of other things you could be doing. The beach. We, could, we do appreciate you tuning in. Base hit right here, give us two. The 1-0, it's chopped towards third and foul. And I think, yeah, yeah it definitely caught him on the leg. Got lucky there, because that could have been a double play ball. Moya standing on third. Escobar on second after the pass ball. And the count one and one on Perez. Lewis winds and fires, it hits Hit him. him. Uh, base is loaded. Got him right on the calf. Hmm, the cardiac cats. Here comes Malik Stevens. Bullpen action for Mississippi Valley. We could see a parade out of the bullpen here if, if things start to go south for the Delta Devils. The good news for them is they have a four-run buffer. But now the bases are juiced. One out. For Malik Stevens. <sighs> Stevens, who led this team in homers and RBIs a season ago. And he's got that wonky perky jerk yeah. stance. But he gets so much power he, he out of that gets short the hold swing. Of one. He can go to right field too. The 0-1, outside one and one. And he locks in a couple of times once he gets his feet settled. You see him right there locking, locking again, and he locks one more time. Stevens a 182 hitter. Six RBI on the season. Has played most of the last two weeks in center field, but didn't play a lot before that. He's trying to work his way back. He's been injured. He's going to lock it one more time. There he, there he is. Pitch from Lewis. Upstairs. And now Lewis in danger of walking in a run as the count is three and one. I would, t I would sure enough be taken right here. You don't want to bound into a double play. Locked in. Luis Tuero waits on deck as the number one hitter. Ball four. Outside, ball four. Moya scores from third after a leadoff single. And the Wildcats have a run back. It's eight to five. Torero has been great at the plate today. Matter of fact, all season. So we feel good about him in this situation with the bases loaded. 
He's put the ball in play a couple of times. He was hit by pitch in the first and was caught in the middle of a 6-4-3 double play. Then he lined into a double play himself, which was Ortiz's unassisted double play. Then he flied out to the shortstop and singled in the seventh, and he's up here in the eighth, bases loaded. Makes a first pitch strike. Three straight batters for the Wildcats have reached via the, via the free pass. Garcia flew out to center in between. Tuero hits it. it on the line to the left. There's a base hit. It's going to drop in front of Mims. One run scores. Here comes Perez. He scores. And the Wildcats have cut the lead to one. Cardiac Cats. I it's keep telling you. eight to seven. The Cardiac Cats, baby. Escobar scores from third. Perez scores from second. It's a two RBI single for Luis Tuero. And it's a one run ball game. We're going back to the bullpen, right where we want to be. What did I say about the parade from the bullpen for Mississippi Valley State? It's happened all too often for them this year. Yeah, they have a couple of quality starters and they, should, they, they can give some people in the Eastern Division some, some problems. Let's see how they fare against Jackson State next week, because they're playing us. They're giving us all we wanted, except for the first game Friday night. Yesterday, they dominated the ball game up until the sixth and seventh inning. Did the same thing today. They have a great ball club also. Here's Jose Salazar Ortega. So, Lewis goes a third of an inning, gives up three runs on a hit and two walks. Three runs on a hit, yep. And now here's Jose Salazar Ortega, listed as an outfielder, but he's making his ninth appearance of the season on the mound. Pitched yesterday and was the main pitcher that the Wildcats had their comeback against yeah, this, last night. This is the same guy that we began to tee off on in the sixth inning. Ortega on the year, 0-1 in eight appearances with one start, has two saves. He's primarily their closer. In 17 and third innings pitch, he's given up 25 runs on 16 hits, all earned with 19 strikeouts and 26 walks. And if I didn't say it already, his ERA is 12.98. Once again, we apologize for the scoreboard only updating in between each half inning. The score is eight to seven. The Wildcats have scored three already in the inning. Moya singled, Escobar walked. They both advanced on a pass ball. Then Garcia fly to center. Perez walked to load the bases. Guzman walked to score Moya, and Tuero just hit a two RBI single, little flare off the end of the bat to left. And the Wildcats have the tying run on second base in the form of Jeremiah Guzman as Garrett Chun stands in, the pitch is inside for ball one. And the good thing is you got speed on the base pass too, also. Anything in the gaps, man. And they're, play they're playing him a shade to left field. They're playing him way over in the left field, center fielder is. Yeah, Chun hits this one to center field. This could go all the way to the wall. He hits the right side for a base hit. Rounding third and coming home is Guzman. Here's the throw to the plate. Guzman is safe. He slides in under the tag, and the Wildcats have tied the game with four runs in the eighth inning. Cardiac Cats. Cardiac Cats indeed. It's a base hit and an RBI for Chun, and it's eight to eight. How about this for a ball game, Daryl? I love it, man. Hey, we got to stop meeting like this, man. Four <laughs> hours, man. Spending a lot of quality time on the headsets together yeah, this week. It's all right, though. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll go to dinner, man, and have a good <laughs> bite, bite to eat. So, Tuero moves to second. Go ahead, run. Down at second base. Sean at first. Guzman scores from second. First and second still only one out. And here is Highland Hall. Hall, one for, actually 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. 
He's hit it twice hard to center and once allied it to the shortstop. Curveball. Curveball in there for a strike. The defense is playing very pole focused on all of the Wildcat hitters as you see them shading. You see the second baseman Weaver standing almost behind second base. They can't fully apply the shift. A lot of room on the right side, but Hall has a great bat to the right side. Curveball again. In, missed it inside, two and one. And after Calvin McClendon threw 121 pitches of brilliant ball. With a standing ovation for the Mississippi Valley fans. The wheels have come off for the Delta Devils. As the Wildcats have plated four in the inning, and guess what? It's the bottom of the order again. Yeah. So often this season, six, seven, eight, nine have come through for the Wildcats in tough situations. And now here's Highland Hall. Gonna lower his batting average a little bit today with the open three start, but I don't oh. think he'll care as he is hit by a pitch and walks for the second time today. And they, don't, they didn't mind that anyway. They didn't want him to even get any 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 good swings. And that's gonna bring up Boris Pena. BP. With the bases loaded, one out here in the eighth. Pena 0 for four with two strikeouts and two fly balls to center. But now he's not facing McClendon. Let's see what he can do against Salazar Ortega. First pitch from him is upstairs, ball one. The bases are loaded again. Tuero on third, Chun on second, Hall on first. Swing and a miss. And maybe foul tip. it foul tipped it into the glove. <coughs> eight runs on 12 hits, one error. Eight runs on 11 hits and one error for the Cats. This is an even ball game. And he takes a pitch outside. He gets away from the catcher, but not far enough for anybody to score. Tuero has some speed over there at third, but even he's, not, even he's not that, <laughs> that brash. Let's play it safe right here. Fly ball now, in the outfield can score a run. Now, as I've mentioned many times before, the backstop is a long ways away. Feels like a country mile away from the catcher, so if one gets back there, the run pretty much scores automatically. Here's the pitch. Big breaking ball missed inside. That one looked like it started behind Pena and broke past his body, but it didn't hit the strike zone. The count is three and one. One pitch, Ortega one pitch away from walking in another run. And it's inside ball four. Cats take the lead. The Wildcats have taken the lead. Tuero scores from third. Sean advances to third, Hall to second and another free pass issued by the Delta Devils, their fifth of the inning. Here comes Mr. Moya. And here's Robert Moya, and the Wildcats have batted around. Mr. Moya, man, he's been swinging at aluminum all weekend. Let's see what he does here. And this is another guy like Highland Hall that I'm sure if there was a, if there was a place to put him, Jose Salazar Ortega would gladly put him on first, but can't do that because it would score another run. The Wildcats have their first lead of the game, nine to eight. A correction, their second lead of the game. Chopped to third. This could be two. Racing to the third base bag and throwing to first, and the ball gets away. Oh. It goes all the way to the Budweiser bullpen. Rounding third to score from second is Hall. Well, Hall oh, correction, Hall, Hall was out at third. third. I hope he didn't injure himself trying to score. Pena slide. scores all the way from first, and the Wildcats have hit double digits. It's 10 to eight. What a wild play. So, let's, let's, let's put our heads together and figure out how to score this. Okay, you're gonna score that. Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice on the runner. Error on the third baseman, only throw. E5, and then Hall is caught going at third. third. Hopefully he didn't hurt himself on that head first slide. So now here's Irvin Escobar with two down, his second time at bat in the inning. He walked and eventually scored. 
They're going to put Hodges in right field now. They're going to kick him out. Basic. This time it's hit to right. Long run for Hall. He's tracking it down. He can't yeah. make the play. It skips to the wall. Coming around third and scoring is Moya. It's a triple for Irvin Escobar. And the Wildcats are piling it on. Cardiac Cats. <laughs> and uh, Hall, Halen, Halen Hall looks like he's okay. He's out giving high five. Like he's okay. They're gonna. He heard his arm sliding into a uh, third when he was out. Yeah. Now here's Jeremy Garcia. Moya scored from second. And that pitch is upstairs. I feel a little bit for Davion Hall because yeah. he made a heck of an effort and just missed it on the stretch. I feel for the kid that was on the mound. They had a stifle for a few for most of the ball game. And yeah, you come back and you come out after 128 pitches. Chopped by the plate. This will be a fair ball. Garcia racing to first. He is out. Let's try and work this one out. Six runs. <laughs> two, three, four hits. One error, one left. And as we go to the ninth inning, the Wildcats have rallied again. They lead it 13 to eight, and they are three outs away from sweeping the Delta Devils. Cats come in 13 and 10. They've shown us all season long their resilience. Once they're down, they will always come back. Today, same thing, cardiac cats. They know what it is. We've got a pinch runner to begin, or pinch hitter, excuse me, to begin the ninth for Mississippi Valley. Here's Chris King, and the new pitcher on to try and save his second game in as many days is Yoan Gonzalez. Yoan has a splendid splitter. He showed it to him yesterday. Is it? Upstairs, one and one. Gonzalez, 2 and 0 oh in. Eight appearances with three saves. He has a 4.20 ERA. Here's the pitch. Ball low, two and one. He's given up seven runs on 15 hits with 22 strikeouts and only three walks. And he looks to try and shut down Mississippi Valley State. King hits this one in the air to right. Hall going back to the track. It's over his head and one hop off the wall. Oh, it's over the wall. It's going to be a ground rule double. 
the second ground rule double of the game for Mississippi Valley State. And I'll tell you what, the one from Victor, from Ryan Brown in the first inning went right in that exact same spot. It's not over yet. This is going to go to the last out. So King now aboard at second, pinch hitting for Chris Soder. And now we have Cameron Bird pinch hitting for Yonani Oferil Ortiz at shortstop. True freshman. Gonzalez deals and it's a foul ball, strike one. Now we were talking in the in-between as the pitch from Gonzalez is outside, one on one. I have the score at 11 to eight. The scoreboard here at the Jack has the score at 13 to eight, and the live stats scoreboard that you're seeing now has the score at 12 to eight. Ground ball left side, fielded by Tuero, fires to first in time, and there's one away. And so, and uh, excuse me, King advances to third. I was watching Johan. It looks like he's not even on the rubber. It's like he's a foot in front of the rubber. Let's watch him. Watch where he's facing his foot. Oh, he comes down so far. Look, he's look, so look where long. He is. Look where he is. Look where the rubber. The rubber is white. It's behind him. Yeah, he's not on the rubber. He's not on the rubber at all. And he gets Narvin Booker to swing and miss. Booker's had a pretty good game. That's a, that's had a, a two-run double in the fourth, a single in the seventh. That's an extra break on your slider. That one caught the outside corner, and it's 0-2. So and two. Outside corner trying to chase a strike in the opposite batter's box, and it's ball one, one and two. Some old pesky devils, man, on a Sunday. King at third for the Delta Devils after a leadoff double. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. And there's two away. Mississippi Valley State down to their last out. And we'll have pinch another pinch hitter. That's number 21. 21. Ty Washington. Ty Washington. Third pitch hitter of the inning. Hitting for the nine hole hitter, Mims. Gonzalez gets a swing and a miss. Another great slider that broke away from Washington. I do not have Washington on my stat sheet, so this may be his first plate appearance of the season. Check swing, doesn't matter. It was in the zone for strike two. Devils down to their last strike. And what would be another Impressive late innings comeback from Bethune Cookman. Gonzalez winds and fires outside one and two. He throws a heavy ball too. His pitch is always tailing once he gets to home plate. That's why he's so tough to hit. Induces a lot of ground balls to the right hand side. Here's the pitch. Fastball just misses two and two. Got some velocity on that fastball. And if he's on the, if he's not on the rubber, wow. Let's see. He does look like he's sitting up about a foot to the right, or his left, all right, to the rubber. Here's the pitch. Outside three and two. And he knows he missed that one. Kind of a grimace on his face as he gets the ball back from Escobar. Two out. Bottom or top of the ninth. Yohan Gonzalez trying to get this save. He deals. Duck three. Strike three. Sits Ty Washington down looking. And the Wildcats win the game 12 to 8. Wow. Incredible series. The Cats blew them out on Friday night.
yesterday evening. They had to come back in the seventh and the eighth inning to win it. Same story this afternoon, the Cardiac Cats. They sweep the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. They push their overall record to 14 and 10, five and one in conference play, as they will lead the Eastern Conference standings after this weekend. Well, you know, Alabama State is playing Jackson State. It doesn't matter what happens there. We swept this afternoon, and the Cats will go into the week with a five-game winning streak on Tuesday. Let me check real quick to see if other SWAC scores have come in around the grounds today. No, we have no scores. Mississippi Valley State with Uncle Monopoly is just spinning up, finishing up here. Alabama State attempting to sweep Jackson State. Florida A&M hosting Alabama A&M. The Rattlers looking for a sweep as well. So I misspoke. If the Rattlers win today, they would top the East because they'd be 6-0. and Okay. Well, Alcorn and Grambling and Southern and Texas Southern are playing in the West. Once again, Another late innings rally from the Wildcats. Down by four in the eighth. They chase McClendon, who was excellent through 121 pitches, but then the bullpen lets down Mississippi Valley State as the Wildcats has scored seven in the eighth inning and eventually take this one 12 to six. That'll do it for us up here at the booth at Jackie Robinson Ballpark. Join us again on Tuesday as the Wildcats will take on the South Florida Bulls who make the trip over from Tampa Bay. For Darrell Natirel, my name is Michael Tirillo. Thank you for watching, and have a very pleasant rest of your Sunday. Good afternoon.